In this episode, I'm going to be talking about journaling. I've had a few questions actually come through over the months asking about journaling. And even though I've replied to people one-on-one, I decided to add it to our episode list just in case there are other people out there that are maybe curious about journaling and want to start or they already do journal and maybe want to expand their um, reach and the way they do it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Welcome to the Super Bonus life podcast where we teach the bible in a simple authentic and practical way so that christians can skillfully apply the word of god to create supernatural results in every area of life this is your host allow me briefly Journaling is something that I have actually benefited from for a long time, a long time. So I'm talking probably 20 to 25 years. So started off as a good old keeping a diary and recording my thoughts, etc. And then it graduated into something more formal, something more of a learning tool, etc, etc, which I'm going to be talking about today. This episode is going to be divided into three parts. The first one is what is journaling, references in the Bible, etc. The second is different ways you can journal or types of journaling and the benefits that each one will bring into your life. And the last one is if you're thinking of getting into journaling or rebuilding the habit, I have a few tips for you to be able to do that. Okay. So let us get started. Number one is what is journaling? (laughs) So what exactly is journaling? I tend to start by debunking myths or start from misconceptions. Now the greatest misconception where journaling is concerned is people tend to associate journaling with writing a diary or keeping a diary. Now that is just one. For example, in the second segment of this podcast, I'm going to talk through eight different types of journaling or the eight different ways that you can journal. And keeping a diary is just one of those eight. So you can see that it's a huge misconception to think journaling is keeping a diary. It is way, 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 way more than that. Journaling is essentially the act of keeping a record of your personal thoughts, your feelings, your insights, and much more, all right? I'm going to get into the different types in a moment. Now, journaling can be on paper, it can be typed out on your computer, on your phone, or whatever it is, but the idea is keeping a record and writing it down. So I'm not talking about journaling where basically I personally, I'm I'm pretty sure there are people out there that could define journaling as keeping maybe an audio recordings and making audio notes and storing them somewhere. I agree. I mean, if you strictly define it by keeping a record, then that record can be audio. But when I talk about journaling and I've done extensive research on this, when people generally talk about journaling, they're talking about writing something down because there's a clarity, there's a level of clarity that comes with writing things down. And so when I refer to journaling in this episode, I'm talking about writing things down, not necessarily documenting voice notes etc which is another way of keeping records of your life okay i'll just throw this in there according to a study conducted by harvard business school participants who journaled regularly had a 25 percent increase in performance and mental health when compared with a control group who did not journal. Now, I don't want to start listing all the benefits of journaling at the moment. Like I said, in the second part, which I'm going to move on to very shortly, I'm going to actually talk about the different ways you can journal and each one has a specific and unique benefit. So we will come to that. But that's just to give you an idea of this thing is not a fluke. It is not even quote unquote a trend because you know how people just come up with trends and people jump on trends and no, journaling has been around. <laughs> for thousands of years it is not a trend i mean the the latest trend is all the gratitude things and people new age people say express your gratitude to the universe and all this kind of thing so it's like a gratitude journal and people do that um as a trend in the last few years it's become a huge trend it sort of has died down again so that's a problem with trends when people sort of jump on trends when the trend dies they the habit or the thing dies with it so journaling is not something that you see as a trend that oh it was popular at one time 
or it's popular again or whatever it really is something that you should look at developing a habit in and integrating into your lifestyle so before i move on from what is journaling still talking about journaling i want to just read out a few scriptures that reference journaling in the bible of course the bible does not call it journaling <laughs> but it talks about writing things down and i want to basically just read out a few scriptures to show that this is a biblical principle i mean look at the fact that we have the bible if you didn't have the bible try and imagine what life would be like trying to be a christian and trying to get to know god i mean i can't even imagine it not having the word of god but the word of god is literally a journal it is men the bible says that were moved by the holy spirit to document so sometimes literally the holy spirit will speak directly through them and they would write what they were hearing some basically just documented the lives of people people like abraham joseph etc if we didn't have all of that imagine what it would be like trying to be a christian today so journaling is a key part of christianity you cannot move away from it let's look at a few references in the bible i just really try to read out the scriptures so that i can then focus on the more practical aspect of this habakkuk 2 verse 2 chapter 2 verse 2 you probably knew i was going to restate that that's the most obvious <laughs> reference to journaling or writing stuff down in the bible and it says that and the lord answered me write the vision make it plain on tablets right they used to use stone tablets in the time so today we make it plain on paper or on your ipad or whatever it is so that he may run who reads with it so in this case it is talking about two things journaling for clarity and journaling for action for vision let me move on jeremiah 32 says thus says the lord the god of israel write in a book all the words that i have spoken to you that's journaling one of the ways that you can journal which is for spirituality i will come to that if you don't ever write down what god is speaking to you i mean Ah, it is <laughs> let me not say anything we'll come to that <laughs> the third one is psalm 102 verse 18 which says let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the lord for posterity so you write things i mean i've lost in, in moving from nigeria to the uk there are some journals that i've lost that it still pains me to today i still wish that a miracle could happen and i could find those journals again because it's a record of my life when i was a teen teenager when i was like 20 or 21 i would love to go back read those things and see how i used to think i mean i still have some of them and sometimes when i read back i'm just so amazed at the boldness even at that age the boldness and the audacity of faith reaching out for things do you see what i mean so for future generations not necessarily just for oh, for your children and grandchildren but also for you as you advance through the stages of life okay let's keep going Deuteronomy 31 19 says now therefore write this song and teach it to the people of Israel put it in their mouth that this song may be a witness for me against the people of Israel so God gives an inspiration an idea so this is talking about writing down ideas that come to you there are people that they wake up and a song comes up in their hearts they're like this is definitely from the Holy Spirit or an idea something on how to resolve a problem at work etc but they never document it and of course the thing disappears all right i have two more for you the second to the last one is second timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 and it says all scripture that is the written word of god written yes all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for what for doctrine for reproof co for correction for instruction and in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work so when you document it's talking about different ways so you document document for for doctrine so for example i run a business and one of the things that is foundational to our business to our organization is our processes i'm a process person because I don't like wasting energy and if you're not a process person if you do not document your processes you are going to be ineffective in fact one of the ways that I realize that this is not common a lot as in not many people live like this or approach life or work like this is I'm I, I'm in a program at the moment I'm doing a program at a university with other business leaders and in the first lesson in the first module that we're doing so I'm in this this room uh, virtual with all these business 
business leaders doing amazing things and the facilitator who herself you know is a phenomenal business leader in the uk she was talking about she asked the question about do you have documented processes etc etc relating to one aspect of innovation and i wrote down this is what we do etc and honestly it was like really you do that because she was even trying to encourage people to even start thinking about doing that in the first place and it made me realize that sometimes you basically despise yourself like oh we're not doing very well or whatever it is i mean in a room full of highly successful business people and we are already ahead of the game in terms of documenting our processes and sticking with our processes i mean that is amazing and the reason why i would think to do that is because of this habit of writing things down and journaling them so it's very important it's profitable for doctrine so doctrine in the business environment could be like your systems or your processes the principles the values if you don't have that you run a department or you run an organization a business there are no clear processes that are documented everybody will just be operating as if as they want to let's move on the final scripture is revelations 1 11 which says write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches so journaling obviously the reference here is when you document things down it's you obviously can then share them i mean we live in the information age now there's people post things on instagram on twitter and as a result of that tens hundreds thousands even millions of people could read them and learn from them or even be entertained by them now if you don't write any of those things down it's unlikely it could just be an idea in your head nobody else is going to know about it apart from you so it's good for the dissemination of information of principles of insights things that you're learning you can very easily share with others when you write them down so let's move on to the second part of today's episode which is the eight ways you can journal as well as the benefits of each type of journaling are you ready the first one is the most obvious and the one it's the one that people tend to associate journaling with the most and that is keeping a diary which is like a thought dump right a diary my own understanding i may be wrong all right so don't get too technical on on the words that are being used some people might think diary is actually planning out stuff etc but in the classic sense of what the word diary means or how people tend to use the word it is like a you know thought dump you are writing down this is what happened that's what happened this person said this to me etc etc you're basically documenting your journey through life okay and that is one fantastic way to journal and the benefit of that is you don't keep things in your mind and you get overloaded and stressed in your mind so one of the key reasons why people keep a diary is to be able to get things down onto paper because you notice that for example something happens at work and you haven't really processed it you're still thinking about it, ruminating ruminating about it you haven't written it down but the actual art of journaling sitting down to document that thing somehow takes the pressure off your mind of keeping it in your mind you know you've dumped it somewhere and that's it. you have some, some measure of relief so that's a definite benefit of doing that because people that are prone to rumination they just keep the thing in their minds over and over again and it's causing stress it's causing headaches so keeping a diary gives you the opportunity to actually lay things down and in a way it's almost like you have dumped this thing there okay i can move on with my life now so that's a definite benefit of writing or keeping a diary as a form of journaling the second one this is one of my favorite ones so i'm going to tell you the ones that i do um keeping a diary i did that as a teenager probably age 10 11 12 etc i haven't really kept a diary since maybe age 18 or something i've used journaling for other purposes all right as a learning tool is the second one and what do i mean by a learning tool it is where you sit down and you reflect you reflect in order to learn there's a huge difference between keeping a diary and what i'm referring to as journaling for reflection keeping a diary is hey come and see what this person said to me this is what happened and then blah 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 yeah so i said back to them can you see uh blah 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 and then you say that is what you date it and then you move on tomorrow you come back and write something else and you basically just move on it's just a document and express your feelings however you're feeling 
uh, I don't like the way this person spoke to me. I don't like this. I don't like that. And you've just basically dumped everything onto paper and you feel better at the end of it. But for learning as a reflection tool is actually to look back and identify and say this pain or this victory or success or whatever it is, this happiness, this joy that I felt as a result of this, what can I actually learn from this? So you reflect, you, you look at it from different angles and you reflect on it and say, okay, this person said this, I didn't like it, this is what I felt, but you don't stop there. You say, why did they say that? And you start thinking, okay, I think the reason why they said that is this. Next time, when I see somebody behaving this way, I know how to respond. So you literally suck the juice out of that situation or pain or joy or victory or whatever it is. So it's not necessarily just for pain. It is any kind of um, experience that has touched you emotionally. Don't just move on. You won a promotion and you were so excited. Don't just record in a diary. A diary entry would be, oh, today I got a promotion, praise God. And then you move on. That's a diary entry. A reflection entry as a journal would be, okay, so how did I get this? What happened? What are the ups and downs? What did I learn from this? Etc. Etc. Do you see what I mean? I love the way Ray Dalio, who is author of the very popular international best-selling book, Principles, puts it. So he says that progress, so if you want to make any kind of progress in life, it's a combination of two things. It's a combination of pain plus reflection. Pain, you can say failure, you can say setbacks, you can say crisis or whatever it is. So it says pain plus reflection equals progress. Pain alone. So people say failure is, uh, is the stepping stone to success. <laughs> It's not automatical. Eh? How can failure equal success? It's not possible now. It is literally reflecting and saying, okay, this failure that I've experienced, why did I fail in this thing? What did I do wrong? What are the lessons that I can take out of this thing and move forward with? What is a different way to approach this thing as a result of the failure? So failure without reflection does not lead to progress or success. It's not automatic. How could it possibly be automatic? Even God looked at the Israelites and he looked at the old covenant and thought, man, the way this thing was playing out, <laughs> it can't work. It cannot work. Where, okay, with their sin, I still want to sort of hang out with them. I could not indwell them because of sin, because God is holy. So I thought, what way could I sort of do it so that I can still hang out with these guys? They'll be my people. So he decided this time, I'm going to write my laws in their minds and I will dwell in them. They will not need anybody to teach them from the least to the greatest. And so he observed the failures of the old covenant and he came up with a better way. Do you see? So failure does not automatically equate to success. It is failure or pain plus reflection that equals progress. So it says when pain comprises the regular leaving of your comfort zone, facing resistance, pushing your boundaries, falling, getting rejected, uncomfortable events throughout the day, not living up to expectations, etc. Then reflection is learning from that pain through processing, reviewing and accountability. Do you see that? So pain plus reflection equals progress. And this is one of the key ways that I use journaling to think things through and to say, okay, this is what happened. And then I sort of turn it in different directions and I write it out. And as I'm writing it out, I'm gaining more clarity about that situation. And then I say, okay, these are the things that I've learned and I document them. And I say, next time, this is how I'm going to show up in a different way. Okay. So that is using journaling as a reflection tool to learn, to continue to learn and make progress in life. The third way to use journals or to journal is as a spiritual compass. This is where in your quiet time, in your Bible study, etc., even in church, you're listening to messages, basically documenting your walk with God. This is the primary way that I journal, documenting my walk with God. And I cannot tell you the kind of progress and growth I've experienced over the past probably 25 to 30 years as a result of this, writing things down. In fact, my growth, my spiritual growth slows even if I maintain my level of spiritual activity. So I may still be doing all the right things, praying, but if I'm not writing stuff down, if I'm not journaling what I'm seeing in the Bible, my meditation, what the Holy Spirit is showing me, I don't grow as much as when I'm doing that. And that's the truth. So there 
there are a number of ways that you can use journaling as a spiritual compass or as an aid for your spiritual activities or spiritual growth. The first one of this is what I've just talked about. You document what the Holy Spirit is showing you at different seasons of your life. So the Holy Spirit might show you and say, read the scripture. And then he shows you and he tells you things about your life, about your future, about your children, about your marriage, about your work, etc. And he shows you these things. A lot of people don't write these things down and they forget. They literally don't write it down. And as a result of that, it's human nature. You forget. You for, And then the Holy Spirit has to waste resources. <laughs> To keep having to remind you of the same thing over and over again. And I'm speaking to myself too. There are times where the Holy Spirit told me so. And I just, I got excited in the moment. Like, wow, thank you so much for showing me this. I'm really excited. Oh, see what the Lord has said. And I don't write it down. And then when the, the storms of light hit again, like, oh, oh, and the Holy Spirit said, eh, excuse me, did I not, <laughs> did I not tell you so, 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 and so, eh? I had forgotten. I had forgotten. So you have no reference. You have no anchor for your soul, right? You have no anchor because you basically just enjoy the revelation and the insights and what God is showing you about that situation in the moment. But because you have not documented it, if something negative or contrary happens, you don't have something to go back to and receive encouragement from it. So what the Holy Spirit shows you about the situations of your life, how you are coming out of it, what he's doing in your life, what he would do etc etc the second way is actually to document what you're learning through the bible study your bible study so the first one is prophetic literally the holy spirit speaking and telling you about your life and what's coming or situations that you're in and giving you hope the second one is your deliberate study of the word so you could say for example oh i'm going to go and study about healing and you gather scriptures and you begin to read about healing now the thing about that is if you don't document it and this is something that i emphasize so much in saw if you don't document document it and something happens either you come in contact with somebody that you need to minister to for healing or you yourself need healing but you never documented it but you've done a study before you have no notes what are you going to go back to what are you going to reference <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to reference? I mean, it's like starting from scratch. Don't say, hey, where are those all those he yeah healing scriptures again? What does by the tribes of Jesus? You know, you, see, you think you remember? If you say, oh, but I studied, I remember. It's not true. You would have forgotten ninety nine percent of what you studied. So when you actually document your studies into the Word of God, it is such a powerful tool. It is a really powerful tool. So I mean, people say to me, oh, you know, you're so seasoned. Well, how can you just literally pick up microphone now and teach is because i have over time 20 25 years studied the word and documented these things because i've documented them my retention is higher and number two i have notes that i can go back to and remember that ah i see okay on the issue of this one oh i got it so you must document what you're learning from the word of god even sermons right document these things so those are two specific ways that you can literally up level your spiritual growth through the use of journaling let me move on the fourth one the fourth way that you can journal is for problem solving so journaling can tremendously improve your creativity and idea generation. What do I mean for problem solving? This is another way that I've used journaling a lot. What does that mean? It means that there's something that baffles you. There's something that you can't just, you can't quite work out. And one of the things that I have learned is when you have a problem that you just can't get your head around, the more you try and think of it and force a solution to come to you, an idea to come to you to solve it, the more that thing eludes you. So I've learned over time that if there's something I'm trying to figure out, I just, oh, I want, I want to resolve this thing. What's going on? I want to solve this problem, etc. The more I think about it, the more upset and frustrated I become that I'm not getting the answer that I want. And I've learned that when your mind is like that, it actually shuts down. Your spirit man cannot get the idea to your mind because everything is just so negative. So what do I do and what should you use journaling for in terms of problem solving? You write it down. You say, okay, Holy Spirit, help me. I want the solution to this thing. Just write the problem down. This is what I, in fact, this is where you could use diagrams. Put the problem, you can write it or draw a diagram to represent it in the middle of a page and just leave it there. 
and just leave it. Literally, you write it down and you walk away. All right. You could even do this before you go to bed. You write it down and you just shut it. And basically what happens is if you don't try and force the answer to come, I'm not telling you something out of theory. I'm telling you as in, this is what I practice. And I did, I stumbled onto it. I didn't like learn it and then go and practice it. I realized that when I say, well, the answer is not coming. I'm just going to leave it as in 10 out of 10 times. Well, I noticed that when I took that approach somehow, when I was not even thinking about it without the pressure, of, I want the answer. Now the thing would just flow an idea. If would just flow into my mind. So, ah, that's how to solve that problem. Or if I'm trying to remember something, it's just not coming. I'll just be like, I'll, it will come to me. I just know it will come to me and I'll leave it. And true, true, the thing would come to me later on when I least expected it, when I wasn't even thinking about it. Because one of the reasons why people hold on to that problem is this is an important problem. I don't want to forget about it. I say, no, I have to find a solution now. So to help you, give you peace of mind that you're not forgetting about it, right? it down in your journal and commit it and say, Father, I thank you because I know you're going to bring me the answer to this problem and just leave it there. And I promise you when you least expect it, the idea will begin to come as to how to solve that problem. So what do you do? You go and pick up where you wrote that thing down on the page and then you begin to write it down. All the different ways that you could solve it. Okay, try this, try this, try this. And as you're doing that, you are clarifying your ideas and it helps with creativity. Do you see? The author of the book the art of learning josh waiting does what is called priming of the subconscious mind i'm telling you that even non-christians take advantage of all these things it says priming of the subconscious mind what does he mean by that every night before he goes to bed he uses his journal to write down the number one problem he's trying to solve right now and after some pondering calls it a day so he leaves it and then he goes to bed by the time he wakes up because he surrendered it he wrote it down said very clearly I want the solution to this problem. And then he released it. He would go to bed. And by the time he woke up, literally the ideas would just begin to come. They'll begin to flow to him. Do you see what I mean? So that is how you use journaling specifically for problem solving. The fifth way you can use a journal is for goal setting. And this is another way that I use journaling goal setting. So people tell me that, oh, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I'd like to achieve. I would like to gain that promotion. I would like my child to go to the school. I would like this to happen, etc., etc. And it is not documented anywhere. It's very difficult for you to actually stay committed to something that you have not even taken five minutes to write down. I mean, w- what is the evidence of your commitment to that thing? Write it down, right? You must write it down. Do you see? So journaling is a powerful way to set goals and actually stick with them. And you can do that in three parts. The first one is for you to start thinking and then write it down your long-term vision. I mean, writing forces you to think because if you have to write, if I ask you if we are in a master class or a workshop and I say, okay, in the next one hour, we're going to plan out the five years of your life or what is your five year vision? Literally having to write it down means that you have to put more thought into it because when you're still in your mind, in your head, I say, oh, I sort of, I know where I'm going. It is still vague. When you have to write it and articulate it, it takes a deeper level of thought and reflection. And that is why you should not be working on any project or any desire that you're pursuing without first of all, writing it down, clarify that vision, write it down, make it plain. So that's the first. The second one is once you have made it plain, journaling will also help you break that long-term vision into smaller parts. So that is, this is really the process of goal setting. First of all, define where you're going and articulate it and journal it down. Then secondly, you now say, okay, in a year's time, this is where I'm going. This is where I want to be. But a year's time is far in terms of that vision. What could you be doing now? And that is where breaking it down into yearly or monthly or weekly and daily goals would come in. All of this is providing you with clarity as to how to reach that thing instead of, okay, this is what I want to achieve in two years time. And you haven't actually planned anything down on paper. And of course, the third step is then to record your process process as you go along. This one is so powerful. All right. It's so powerful because there are things that are faith projects that I've had 
had and I've very clearly documented along the way that my progress, so of course, the vision and then breaking it down and what the Holy Spirit has showed me at different stages of that faith project. And reading it back, honestly, that's like my line on my bear. I'll go back and read it. And it also helps you because as you're reading through it, you, you know, sometimes when you've achieved the goal, if it, it feels like, oh, you know, you forget all the pain, like a woman was pregnant, she forgets all the nine months of discomfort or whatever. She forgets maybe the discomfort of the delivery. But once the child comes, the Bible says that she's happy. She forgets his sorrow. <laughs> So sometimes when you're like that, if you go into another situation, so if a man is pregnant again, for example, and she's going through all that discomfort again, she's like, who sent me, etc., etc. So when you don't document the process, because if I'm going through something that is challenging, all I have to do is go back and, and say, oh, there were times where I felt like this. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with this process. It doesn't mean that this journey is doomed simply because I've hit this obstacle or this has happened or I'm feeling sad and discouraged and disappointed. No, it doesn't mean that this is not going to happen because for this one that also happened in the past, this was exactly what I went through. And if that sort of brings peace to your mind and reassurance that you should keep going, that everything will be okay. So you record your progress along the way, you record what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. As you meditate on the scriptures that the Holy Spirit has given you, you are adding more insights to it. So he's showing you new things. I mean, this is so valuable to me that I couldn't live without this process because I keep going back to the scriptures that God gave me regarding that faith project. As I meditate on it, I see more lights. I see more things that I'm supposed to do. I see more action steps that I'm supposed to take and I document them. So do you see what I mean? So your journaling, it provides proof of your progress. You see how far you've come because in the moment it feels like I have not made any progress. But when you read back and you notice that, uh, wait, to on day one, see what I was feeling on day 50 uh, and see where we are. It's, 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 it's very encouraging. The sixth one is for accountability. Now accountability is sort of linked to goal setting, but it does not include the whole writing, the vision, breaking it down, etc. It's literally just the part where you use your journal to hold yourself accountable by tracking your commitment to that thing you said we're going to do. So that one is literally, so if someone says over the next six months, I'm going to save a certain amount of money weekly. So in your journal or a portion of your journal, you basically start documenting week one. Did I do it? Okay. I did it. I even did more. Why? What happened? What, what was the reason why I was able to even do more than I thought? And you write it down. Okay. Week two, actually something happened. I didn't do it. So you can actually track. So that's accountability. So if you want to hold yourself accountable, journaling is a brilliant way to do that because you know that you are, you, are, you need to do that journal entry at that time where you're supposed to. So if it's a weekly thing, goal like i said on sunday night you have to go and write to your journal and explain why you didn't do it or a simple tracker just have lines and then you're putting tick or cross i use this i don't write it down but i use apps to help there's a particular app that i've used for years that helps me with this i just put what i want to track on one on the left and then it basically on the right hand side i just put tick or cross and you can see and it'll help you calculate and say you've been consistent with this thing for 21 days without missing a day and it would tell you all the way through you you are about 70 percent consistency or whatever it is these are tools for accountability the seventh one probably like i said at the start of this episode the one that sort of took the whole world by storm <laughs> recently but the trend seems to have died down which is a shame is for gratitude gratitude brings you into a place of abundance and i've actually done a whole episode if not two on gratitude in this podcast it puts things in perspective so if you're journaling every day for gratitude, keeping a, a gratitude journal, you can say, oh, but I'm going through nothing is well. All that, nothing is working. Everything is just upside down. It's because the person has become ungrateful. All right. The gratitude that they should be expressing daily has been stuffed out and because they have focused excessively on what is not working, no matter how dark your life looks, notice I said looks, not how dark it is. It is perception. No matter how dark a person's life looks, there's always a glimmer of light because God will not leave us comfortless. There's always something that you can be grateful for. There's always something that will bring light into your eyes. So if you use a gratitude journal, it forces you, it really forces you to focus.
focus on what is there on the abundance that is there even in the midst of lack so for your mental health for your peace of mind for encouragement for motivation for you to continually keep the praise of god in your mouth instead of being like the children of israel that kept complaining over the most ridiculous things so journaling for gratitude is such a powerful thing and of course if you look at the story of david the reason why he was able to charge and run towards goliath was because he quote and unquote had a, a gratitude journal he had journaled the fact that when he had the lion and the bear god saw him through he was extremely grateful to god for that and it gave him the confidence knowing that if God delivered me from these things he's definitely going to deliver me from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine so journaling for gratitude and the last one the eighth way you can journal is for communication or for presentation purposes to literally improve the way you communicate again this is one that I've used in fact I use it all the time this podcast that I I'm I'm recording right now that I'm presenting to you I don't just sit down and start talking or maybe some people do that but i can't understand how they will do that at the very least the kind of ideas they can come up with will be limited the delivery would be limited so you know what i do i use evernote for my note taking and my note writing so i have different kinds of things that i use but specifically for podcasts i use evernote so in advance, I have a journal in Evernote that is dedicated to my podcast and I would have different topics, so different notes with different titles of podcasts, sometimes 10, 15, 20 in advance. Sometimes those are blank except for just the title or even the idea I want to talk about. And what happens is over time, when I get new ideas, I see something, I will literally grab it and then put it there. Or an idea comes to me, oh, I could say it this way, etc. And I'll start to document. And when it comes to actually preparing, to record a podcast or an episode, I should say. I have notes, I have thought about it, I have documented, I have written stuff down, I have arranged it. And that's why when I come, I'm. it feels like I'm just sitting and I'm talking and it's flowing. But trust me, I didn't just sit down. Do you see what I mean? So if you're somebody that feels like, oh, I'm scared of public speaking, I'm scared of presenting at work or talking to my team and doing all those things, my heart will be beating. Boo, 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 boo. Try journaling, try documenting your thought processes thinking about it, pondering about it, writing things down, right? Think through your speech or your presentation on paper and I promise you it will greatly improve your delivery. Don't just stick stuff on, on the PowerPoint, just bullet points and that's it. No, the, the PowerPoint, what are you going to say? Think it through, write it down. You don't necessarily need to now show all the notes and then be reading out the notes, but the process of writing it down for you helps to clarify your thoughts regarding that presentation. A Stanford University study found the critical relationship between writing and speaking. They found that writing reflects clear thinking and in turn clear presentation. They found that writing stuff down helps you actually think better, have greater ideas and more clarity regarding that subject matter. And when you have more clarity, it will lead to clear and greater communication. Okay. So those are the eight ways that you could journal and the benefits of going down any of those routes. Lastly, very quickly, I'm going to talk about how to create a journaling habit. So if this is you in the sense that you've never really done out as a habit and you want to start, you want to create that habit or you used to journal or you only did one and then you fell off the wagon, you haven't done it in years and you want to recreate the habit or vibe. Maybe you used to keep it as a diary and you want to go into other areas. I have five really small steps or tips or strategies, whatever you want to call them. The first one is have some clarity regarding the purpose of your journaling, meaning decide what you want to journal for. So I've shared with you eight different ways that you can journal. The thing is, lack of clarity paralyzes. Lack of clarity paralyzes. So you say, I just want to start journaling. You don't know, you haven't picked what you want to journal about. Whether it's diary, whether it's your spiritual growth, whether it is improving your communication skills, whether it is a gratitude journal, whether it is goal setting, whether it's accountability, etc. Et just, I just want to start journaling. Listen, you open a thing in the morning, you don't know what to write because you haven't set the intention prior to that time. 
So the first step, please, is decide the purpose. Decide the purpose. And if you're starting off, you want to create a habit, you should obviously pick one, okay? Pick one, pick one, which leads me to my next strategy, which is start small. Start small. So don't say, oh, all these eight things sound good. Okay, I'm going to do all of them. You will just wear yourself out and you will abandon it. So start small. You could say, I'm going to just start with a gratitude journal once a week. That is manageable. It's manageable, right? Once a week. But someone will say, I have a greater capacity than that because I have sort of journaled in the past, right? They could say, okay, I'm going to do mine daily. But basically, remember step one, pick the purpose. Don't go and pick four different purposes that you want to journal for. Pick one. Pick one and start small. So that's number two. Number three is identify your ideal window. What do I mean by that? The best time and place where you will journal. So don't just say, oh, I will do gratitude journal or I will do accountability journal. When? What time? Is it in the morning? Is it at night before you sleep? Is it at lunchtime? So you need a time and a place. Is it at night in bed just before you fall asleep? Is it in the morning when you go to that coffee shop? and you sit down, I mean, it's up to you. It does, there's no right or wrong way, but you must clearly identify your best window for you to do it. Number three is to give you a higher percentage of sticking with it, make it a ritual. A ritual is different from a routine. A routine is showing up and doing the same thing the same way every single time. That's a routine. Yeah. You get up, you brush your teeth in the morning. That's a routine. A ritual is making it into an experience. It's making it into an experience. So if you add things, other elements to it that will make it more enjoyable, you're more likely to stick with it. So a ritual could be something like when you journal, you have your favorite cup of tea with you and you have candles and music. I know that's a bit over the top, okay? But I'm just trying to explain to you what it means to create something as a ritual as opposed to just a routine. One of the rituals that I've created out of journaling is in the morning. I love the fact that after I prayed, declared, prayed in spirit, worship and all of that, I just sit there, you know, there's some music playing and I'm having this wonderful fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It is indescribable. The kind of joy that I experience in that moment where the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and I'm writing things down and he's filling my heart with joy and peace and he's speaking to me about different things and I'm resolving things. I'm saying, okay, so what do you see? For, so for me, it's not just sit down and write a gratitude journal. No, for I've built it into my prayer lifestyle so that everything comes together as an experience as opposed to just a routine. So make it a ritual. Number four is decide on the frequency. So is it going to be weekly? Is it going to be daily? Is it going to be three times a week? Is it going to be every Sunday night? Is it going to be every every Monday morning, whatever it is, decide in advance when you're going to do in terms of the frequency. And yeah, I think that is it. So those are the four. Number one is decide the purpose in advance. Number two is start small, start small, pick one area, one way of journaling, stick with it and don't overwhelm yourself. If you know that, um, you're not going to be able to write four pages and you just want to write a line, one line, one sentence is enough. One sentence is enough, right? You don't, you don't, have to write an epistle you don't have to write an epistle you can just write one sentence and that's it number three is to make it a ritual create an experience around that journaling and number four decide on the frequency and if i wanted to add a number five it would be show up show up and and stick with it if you miss a day or two or if you miss a, a time slot when you were supposed to do it it's not the end of the world you have the rest of your life for this thing nobody is you know marking register and, and saying if you don't do it this will happen this is what's going to happen etc so it's not the big deal if you miss a few days or if you miss a few weeks or whatever it is just pick up from where you left off right so i hope that's helped you and this is allow me brigway i will be back with another episode of the super abundant life podcast thanks bye